everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're going to talk about art crime. Welcome to the Big Art Quest. <laughs> if you're brand, brand new here, this is a class, not class, where every week we get together and talk about important art issues that fine artists deal with, but we explain it. So if you're brand new to painting, it seems really simple and not complicated. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hey, guys. Normally, he follows me with one of four cameras, but today it's just one camera. And he reads comments and questions. Ask me what you guys, I don't I don't see the chat. If you're brand, brand new here, I don't see the chat. If you're returning here, it's good to see you guys. I know this is a, a topic you have wanted me to copy, which is fair use and copyright. And what does all this mean? And what's going on, on Pinterest? Can I paint this? Can I sell this? What can I do? I have no legal advice for you. What can you do? This is not legal advice. It's not a substitute for legal advice. I'm just kind of going to explain to you what I have ascertained from a long, long time in the art biz. Mm -hmm. Some things I've learned, some things I've taken away, and some stuff you can do to make this not scary. I think a lot of people are scared. I, 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 I I'm think looking at John. I think a lot of people are scared concern, of copyright. for sure. It's like what what you know I'm I'm a little confused like and I read about it a lot. Yeah, John actually knows quite a lot about copyright. Comes from the video game industry, yeah. which is much more ravenous <laughs> than well, no, the and, art industry in on these issues. Well, they can all afford their attorneys. Yeah, I think so. They can pursue their conversations okay. <laughs> longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's start off right away with the paintings that you see on this channel, mm -hmm. right? Okay. All the paintings that you guys do with me are intrinsically under copyright. I'm the original copyright holder. Yes. Right? Now, I have posted at the bottom of every one of my lessons a use policy. In the description, I'm like, in the description down below. Today, as always, there's some helpful links. If you guys did need legal advice or wanted to look up some of these things more intently, if you're a fan artist and you're trying to figure out what your risk is, way more information and then at the bottom of all of that is a use policy and it basically says how I the copyright holder of all these fabulously beautiful it designed images give you rights to use them yeah now some somebody here in chat here because I'm reading the chat along with us mm -hmm. somebody said that asked what is IP so we may have used that without explaining what it is we do that because we've been this it's intellectual property those are ideas that belong to me right so, so you have ideas that might belong to you and that, that is your intellectual property. That's right. You have an aunt who's invented 55 things that are never going to get made, but it's her intellectual property. <laughs> <laughs> My mom is one of those. She's always trying to get people to build her inventions for her. <laughs> She'll let them make the money. She just wants it. <laughs> <laughs> so and we have we have that. And my dad's actually my dad my my dad actually has copy you know has all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's the ideas and the things that we come up with. So, in my use policy down there, it kind of explains it. But I'll just go over that with you guys because you ask me that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can give these to your friends and family. If you do a painting along with me, yep. we give you permission to just give it away to your friends and family. Of course. Yeah. If you want to donate it to your local fire department for them to auction it to raise money, we cool with that. Absolutely cool. <laughs> cool. We're so happy. Thank you for paying it forward. Um, if you decide to sell them in a commercial sense, like you're going to have them on an Etsy store, you're going to go to a local craft fair, we ask that you give what's called attribution. Yeah, just let them know where the idea came from. In some form, like you put a little card on the back of the painting, sometimes people write stuff. They just say, where did this idea come from? Who is the original creator of the idea? Mm. Yep. Right? We ask that you don't make a bunch of t-shirts, prints, or reproductions. <laughs> yeah. Because we make t-shirts. Yeah, if you want, we we make T-shirts for you to come get. We've already we already worked it all out, so we're if, hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. hoping you'll buy our T-shirts because you know, that's that's we are the original intellectual property rights holders. So that's what we want to try to do is is to try to make T-shirts with those. Right, and if you were say in a commercial business like a sip and paint, we ask that you obtain a commercial license. Yes, which we have. Which we now have. Yes, <laughs> took us forever. We're working, you know, we're, but we're there. <laughs> yeah. So we have a, we, you know, we have a whole we have a whole commercial division who can help you with that. So. So that's ours. Yeah. But that's just here. Mm -hmm. These rights do not extend to another YouTuber. Nope. We can't Me talk and about Angela that. Angela are tight. My rights are not extended via our friendship. <laughs> no, and, and, and not the other way around. Like we yeah. can't use her stuff without her permission. Right, and and how she her use policy doesn't apply to my use policy. Each individual channel on YouTube retains its own copyright unless you see it under Creative Commons. Yeah, 
Creative Commons has many subset licenses, but basically that means that there's some intention for you to be able to reuse or revisit this product in some way. Yeah. Generally read more whenever you see Creative Commons because those can be limited. You can have limited commercial, mm -hmm. limited distribution, all kinds of things. You want to follow those down. But, but most of the time, they, most everybody is going to ask for attribution along the way, and that's just sort of the nice tip of the hat. But like Pixabay the, is a photo resource. It says right there, public domain, no oh yeah. attribution required, which means I, if you'll notice when I go to paint my photo, I often will say who took the picture and mm -hmm. where it came from. That's because that's what paint my photo asks for in its use policy. Yeah. If you take a class or workshop with an artist, many, many, many of them will not allow you to sell the artwork mm -hmm. yep. or give it away. It is yeah. for educational purposes only and your your home enjoyment. Yeah, and in workshops and things like that, that really makes sense because the artwork that they're using is really has curriculum based around it. And well, they you know, in, in, when it gets in workshops, if it gets widely distributed, it loses value and it, it artists yeah. will sometimes try to protect their fine art collection versus their trying to pay their overhead by teaching classes. So, you know, there, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big world. We've got to respect everybody's intellectual property. And they'll generally tell you there'll be something in your handouts. You can always ask the artist. One of the things I don't want to see mm -hmm. is you guys being scared of this topic. I get a lot of messages that you're literally scared of painting something because you're not sure what will happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, people are, we're, every, every, at the end of the day, everybody out here, we're all people. So, I mean, like, if you have a question, just ask, you know, and that goes to anybody, you know. And, and not everyone's going to answer nice. Yeah, I know one fine not. artist where dad asked if his daughter could paint one of her paintings, and she wrote back a very long, mm, intense letter saying no. Well, and, and how dare you? This is my thing, and, and, and I, I don't give my stuff away for crafters. And she was really indignant. It probably wasn't the answer that he wanted. <laughs> and he took the print he'd purchased and stuck it in the barn. <laughs> so, so he had his feels, she had her feels, everybody had their feels. But it's the a big, question big didn't hurt anybody, and it was yeah. good to ask it because she definitely protects her intellectual mm -hmm. property. The ideas are ideas. My owl eye. Yeah. Right? This image. I did this at the beginning. Actually, before I think anyone knew they were into owls, I had a I had a moment where I was like, um, I really miss you, every owl from the 1970s. You did. It was, it was we were we were the pre-owl. It was like before that we were going through our 70s kick, and she was like, I feel the owls rumbling. Let's go. And we had to go find them. We we drove yeah. hours looking for owl kitsch because there was none, and then all of a sudden it came. And then it came, and then it came in droves. This was one of the first on Pinterest. I think last looking at it, it's been reshared in something like a quarter of a million times. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's just it's gotten out there. Boy, I wish this, I had a this website. This got out back there then. before I was like, I should probably watermark this so somebody could trace this back to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> not even to protect its copyright, but just so that people could find me again if they thought it was a cool painting and yeah. no idea it was gonna blow up so big or get pulled off of sites or reshared how it was in, in any capacity. Yeah. Right? So it's just bizarre. Yeah. But in this thing, this has created an interesting experience for me because this is one of these horned owls, right? Yeah. So I got a I got a, a public domain picture of a horned owl's face. And when I was making the decision on how to make this, I kind of was like, I could I wanted to do the eyes. And I was like, well, I could do the two eyes, I could do the left eye or the right eye. <laughs> and so I, I did the left eye. <laughs> I think you did it the other way at first, but we didn't like it and then you did it Flipped this it. way. Right? So. And so I did this. Now, over the years since I published this, uh, people have come back and been like, you, you, you stole it. Well, and you actually, they'll show me my own picture back to myself, which often <laughs> cracks me up. With, with like, your own thumbnail. It's like, but that's, <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, okay. So but, but they'll also show me. Let me, let me. Okay, okay. They'll also show me a bunch of photographs or different things that they've seen out there. Right? That mm -hmm. they're worried. And... Here's the thing on this, as an artist, there's something we like to talk about, which is parallel thinking. The oh, day yeah. that I woke up and went, it's all about owls, across the planet, some other people woke up. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, and said, there was a group of leaders of us, I think, that went, it's just going to be about the owl for me right now. Owls and mushrooms. And we, we woke up and we got excited about that, and we all looked at the subject matter, and we all had we very similar public domain references 
Mm -hmm. right? We're all going to that again and again together and then doing works based on this. Also influenced from your childhood and growing up by the same major pop culture imagery. Right. So, and then there's that, right? So when I see another person who just painted an an eye, Mm -hmm. a lot of times I'll go, not any eye, this eye. You'll hear me say this to you guys. Like, I'm not worried about every eye, just this one, just this one. Right. Just the ones I specifically did. Because somebody else might have been like right eye, left eye, this eye, and then done it some other way. Which is why a lot of it just, it's not even connected to me. This is this is parallel thinking in art. It happens. Lockery and I had a weird thing. We both used Paint My Photo. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know her well at this time. And I was not constantly on her YouTube channel. Yeah. Because, you know, busy making YouTube videos. And I did a Grisai Apple and horrifyingly later I found out that a little bit before I had released a Grisai apple she had done picked the exact same photo I know why she picked it it's a really good still life (laughs) my mom also did it (laughs) we all got into that one (laughs) you know and then my mom and her did grapes but we all picked it we weren't copying each other we weren't running each other down we just at that time weren't talking to each other like now some of us YouTubers will talk to each other and be like "Uh, hey what you doing this week yeah. Because we all use very similar open source resource places. Mm-hmm. So if I'm on Paint My Photo and Pixabay and a bunch of other people are on Paint My Photo and Pixabay, we might all like the same photo at the same time. Yeah. Does that does that make it sense? It totally that can does. And it we're totally not does. in any way copying each other. I'm I'm just over here reading the comments. Oh, I love lots to, of questions. So I, yeah. I just, and, and I'm sorry. I mean, well, I this is a good space to take some okay, questions. Good, good, good. So uh, to start out with, there's um, Jen and uh, and Shelly and a couple other people were asking in here about the lo- where the line is between fan art and copyright infringement. <laughs> That's a complicated. Yeah, but I I have, okay, so this is not legal advice. This is just sage experience of I've had friends taken to court and I've had other friends just get away with, uh, it's literally the murder of Superman. (laughs) Um, So what I'll say is that copyright, the, when an image is copyright is, copyrighted is, is, is pretty specific. Everything before 1908 is out of copyright. You can, you can actually paint that and revisit that. You shouldn't probably try to fake that you're a famous artist by any means. But that's why I can paint Van Gogh. Yeah. Right? It's out of copyright. And you can check things like Art Authority if you want to know when a painting was created. Mm -hmm. Um, Artwork registered at 1978 after 1978 is the life of the artist plus 70 years now. Mm -hmm. And Disney's campaigning very hard to get these copyrights extended because they're trying to protect the mouse. So this this time frame in modern art is going to change probably a lot. Yeah. And, and those big behemoths with a lot of money are going to be protecting their Coca Colas, their their Mickey's, their their Marvels. They're going to all be fighting for this to mm. to hold their copyright as long as possible. So if you were to take say Spider Man, Spidey, right, right, Stanley's still alive, mm-hmm. right, everybody who you know they're there. This copyright is still protected, but you'd go to a comic con, you're going to see a bunch of Spidey art, aren't you? Yeah. So where's so that's I think that's the question. Is it like is it when you monetize it? Is that the line that you're crossing? No. The moment or, you, you have okay. Where, so here's the truth. The legal line is the moment that you copy it. The only person that has the right to the artwork is the original creator, and they have the right to reproduce it. That means paint it again, create derivative works. That means paint it again and change it up some. They have the right to display it, perform it. And distribute it. Mm-hmm. You don't. But what about so so? What is what is that fan? Where is that fan art fair use so mean? What is that really? That what, okay, it's not under fair use. Fan art, unless it's parody, probably doesn't get covered by the um, fair use free speech <laughs> parody mm-hmm. area, right? Right. Like parody is a tough place. Big artists have been absolutely gotten on parody. What I'll say is is that. Here's the truth. Lawyers are about five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. For Marvel, for Disney, for you, for me. Anytime we have to talk to each other about whether or not we're under fair use or whether or not we breach copyright, it costs everybody a ton of money. Mm-hmm. On top of that, several companies like Star Trek, yeah, they've taken a cultural attitude, which is totally at their discretion, that they could change any day. 
that their fan community is the only reason that they're relevant. Right. So they allow a lot of fan art and fan fiction and fan movies and reproductions of the costumes and reproductions of the characters. Mm. Right? They allow that. They tolerate that because they believe that it's beneficial to their company. So, Marvel and some other companies, they have a degree that they have tolerance, which is not officially said. And I, I've heard different things, but what I will say is, is that um, well, if, anytime they can send you a cease and desist. I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah. yeah the, well, the truth is they can always send you a cease and desist that you can't sell it. Generally, they're looking to see if you're, if you're harmful to the property. Gotcha. It's at their discretion, though. That's the truth of it. It's at their discretion. However, you might have noticed from Etsy, mm -hmm. a lot of Superman stuff out there, a lot of Spider-Man. So a lot of these companies have a public policy. They do, and you can always check that out. Sometimes their public policy, like the ones I use as an example, are not that publicly posted. Right. Sometimes they're very publicly posted. Sometimes you can write and get permission. Okay, so now let me bring it back down here to some of the questions, some, some like okay. some of the local stuff. First of all, this what if it's for personal use only? Okay. Short of the rumors that the camera on your computer is on and they can see into your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not selling it, you're not doing anything, can and you just you give it to your friends. Can you sing a Taylor Swift song at home? Can you sing it on YouTube? Would you sing it at home? Right. Right. If you're trying to learn how to do a painting and, and I don't know anyone in fan art, fantastic art, uh, uh, comic art that does not have to go through a period of copying the artist that came before them to learn the skills. And honestly, this is one of the things that makes Chuck Carson so crazy because you can't get a job in the industry if you can't boom, 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 throw down okay. Spider-Man classic. You know, so how are you going to learn to do that? You're going to have to draw it. So here's some more specific ones, like from our community Happy. itself, right? Mm -hmm. So Bever I, got, I got a bunch of them here that I'm trying yeah, to get to. Yeah, I just want to answer all these questions right, so you so, guys go to sleep at night with your heads on the pillow, sleeping deeply. Yeah. Uh, so Virginia, we're going to get to them all. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, so Beverly. Um, so she, this is a great example. So mm -hmm. she's done. Uh, she did. Remember your painting that had the rusty truck in it? Yeah. She took that rusty truck, and I think, if I understand her question, her statement here, she did a version of that rusty truck and put in her other stuff with it. Mm -hmm. Where does that fall? So that can fall under derivative works, or you're just inspired. And this is a rough razor's edge we artists have to, to work. So, like, <sighs> if I have a very iconic something, like Mickey, right? Right. And somebody paints Mickey's head out of fruit, but it's recognizably Mickey. That's derivative. Even though sometimes I'll say work, work is derivative. Like everything in the painting party industry is in its nature somewhat derivative. Because the images are so simplified. Because the palettes are so simplified. Because they're trying to make sure that they can get 45 people in and out of a room fairly quickly. Everybody's stuff kind of looks like everybody else's stuff. And it has made this area murkier muddier and weirder than it's ever been before <laughs> now i as an artist tend not to be litigious because anytime i talk to my lawyers it's like 500 bucks <laughs> right you know so in general i'm not like kind of observing the world that way but some artists do yeah. and some artists will be like if they even remotely think you're similar to them they're going to come at you so yeah, so that I think that echoes uh, the court and judge of Frisky Chris, Christie. Mm -hmm. She says uh, basically uh, what I'm getting is that there's no real hard fast rules to keep you completely safe uh, if you copy something. No, it comes down to whether you get caught and the discretion of the IP holder and the judge. And the which, judge. by the way, the language on copyright infringement. Oh, and fair oh use I misunderstood is that. Super vague. <laughs> she was saying she she it was she was saying. Uh, it, the discretion of the court and judge, not that she was the court and judge. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the discretion of the court and judge. Yeah. So um, copyright infringement is a lot like adult content. Yeah. It is up to each court to decide if you've infringed on somebody's copyright. So I'm covered under something called fair use because I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. And I'm also hoping that on some stuff uh, there's not a direct monetary issue. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like not impacting... Uh, a company like Disney in, in any kind of a way that, like, I don't really think I'm taking them on. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm teaching the processes and techniques, right? Uh -huh. 
and I'm not I'm not harming them. I'm not producing. You'll notice that there's works I don't produce t-shirts or even cups of. It's not my work. Can't produce. I'm not doing reproductions. I'm I'm in that space. Now, even if I do everything right and I'm fairly 100% sure that I'm covered under fair use, that doesn't mean that Disney won't wake up one day and just decide, hey, I'm going to throw $5,000 at this problem. Mm-hmm. Right? And and come have a moment. Because, honestly, right. anybody can do anything. Yeah. What I will say is that um, I've been in some very uh, interesting scenarios, very huge companies where we all, we all had patents and... Mm-hmm. Man, it didn't matter what our patents said. Mm-hmm. It w- we were we were in court fighting it out there because, the, you know, that was business, right? And there's other stuff where you're sure, like Star Trek. You're like, man, they must be like, they know they love it. They love their fans. This is how they engage with their fans, and they're very very clear, you know, on their policies of fan art. Um, a lot of the gaming companies are starting to become more and more clear about like how the, they they support fan art. Or they support the fans. Nintendo was clear the opposite way. Yeah. They're happy for you to do it, but they'll take all the money you derive from it, which is why you don't see a lot of Nintendo property on my channel, because they'll literally claim the video. Yeah. Well, you know, YouTube provides a lot of tools. They're training YouTube and tools. is very progressive in that they're mm-hmm. trying to find ways to bridge these gaps as best they, they can. They are, but for the purposes of the viewers, stuff like this. As you're a painter at home, one thing you might yeah. not think of is like, so you love Coca-Cola products and you want to do a Coca-Cola painting. Mm-hmm. Right, you want to do something vintage, and, and you love this time in here, you know, history, and you do these beautiful Coca-Cola bottles, and you have that one painting. Chances that you're going to hear from Coke are very slim. If you make reproductions and it gets picked up by a national chain like Bed Bath and Beyond, mm-hmm. you will be hearing from yeah. attorneys. Yeah, I mean, it, it's <laughs> there's some common sense being used here. I mean, like, but, but artists sometimes they just they just don't think of it. They're like, I, I took these bottles, I arranged them, I took the picture. And now here's another thing that you as an artist really need to be thinking about: what happens when you sell your painting? What are your rights? You've sold your painting, twenty thousand dollars, to some wealthy attorney who just paid it. Well, it would depend on what rights you sold them, I guess. Well, I'll explain that. So you retain all the rights to the painting. The person who purchased your painting does not have rights. Now, interestingly enough, depending on the country of origin, they can cut it up and destroy it. Yeah. But they don't have the right to display it publicly. So say you sent it to an attorney, right? You sold it to this attorney. He put it up in the office. It gets photographed and put in a magazine. And then he hands you a business card where your painting's on the business card. He's infringed on your rights in two places. In the magazine, he didn't have the right to put it in that magazine. Uh And on the business card. And initially, you're going to go after, I guess, the magazine and the... It's weird how it gets back to the lawyer, but you got to sue a whole bunch of people if you feel like, you know, pursuing that down. Chances are, if your client gave you $20,000, you're probably going to not pursue that. That would be my artist advice to you. If you've got somebody who's dropping $20,000 on your paintings, let the business card go. Now, this is an interesting question. That's just my artist advice. It's not legal advice. It's just life collector advice. (laughs) Don't mess with your collectors is my actual advice. So, so this is a really interesting question here. Real quick. Okay. So, uh, what about using images from a Google search? <gasps> Don't. Well, isn't everything on the internet free? No. Did that was actually asked, or are you just asking me that? Well, I mean, it it, <laughs> it it's a it's a common question. Like you could nothing assume, you on assume Pinterest, that Etsy, you could use? or on Google is or Deviant Art. Do you have any rights to use? You can go there and research it for trend information. Sometimes you'll hear me talk about this. I'll be like, I see a trend. Which means I'm seeing 50, 60 artists doing varying works on a subject matter. Mm-hmm. I'm part of a couple trends, owls and umbrellas. We'll get to you at Virginia, I promise. Okay. Well, oh, no, I can't stop. No, no, me. keep going. Okay. So I'm part of a couple trends. Yep. Right? But there, there's a bunch of artists painting on the subject matter of rain or painting on the subject matter of umbrellas, which is why I'm always like, my girl, my umbrella, my way only. Mm-hmm. Right? That image. Because there's a bunch of people out there doing it. We talked about drip flowers. A lot of people painting drippy flowers. Drippy art, everything. That's a trend. I'm teaching you a technique. But I make sure that I don't take someone's specific image. And I do that a couple of ways. Which I, I'm definitely, I, I, I guess I'll tell you the couple of ways that I do. I like to check the stuff that I'm designing. I go into Google image search. Uh-huh. I do reverse image search. 
and I put in a couple keywords that I think people might be looking for. I don't even just trust Google to do that. I'll be like drippy flowers, mm -hmm. right? Because somebody might be looking for drip flower paintings. And it's going to pull up things that are like mine, exactly like mine, or similar to mine. Right. And I make an effort to go and look and make sure that I haven't parallel thought myself up onto somebody's front door. Mm -hmm. It's not always perfect. Because, again, in simplified work, chances are you're going to be up on somebody's front door on occasion. Okay. Right? And also people never really, I mean, like, they, they'll literally be like, it's fall leaves with a waterfall. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's all of Michigan, right. just to be straight. <laughs> like all of it, as Flame Gremlin will explain to me all the time. All of Michigan. So there's a bunch of questions here. I'm going to go. Okay, back. happy to answer. So uh, oh. where where to go? Okay, so one Virginia was uh, has asked this a couple times. I want to make sure that we get to. Uh, yeah, I want to get Virginia's. Okay. Uh, is, is, so this is real specific about your stuff. Okay. Is it okay for me to teach a free homeschool art class to ki for kids and using your videos and techniques? Yeah. Yeah, it's a non-commercial use. If you, okay, your friends, your kid, okay, so here's some ways that you could use this painting. You want to use the class. And, and you want to be the person who's kind of guiding your friends through it. You're the hostess. Yeah. Your friends come over. They're not paying you 15 to $20 a head where you're netting a profit in your home business. Right. <laughs> That's a home business, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no. Your girlfriends, they come over. They bring the margarita mix. They bring everything. And you guys have a party. And even if they're pitching in for paint and stuff like that, there's Send not us a pictures. Send us pictures. Send us pictures. We're super excited. Um, if you're at home school anywhere on planet earth and you're sharing this information with kids send us pictures send us pictures if you're working in an adult care facility and you and, guys paint yeah send and us pictures we're helping you provide art for your community yeah yeah and and this is you're not primary this is you're not this is not your primary mode of business mm. you know you're not you're not using this as as a as your you're teaching at joanne's they're paying you <laughs> Not Joanne's, uh, Michael's. Or anywhere. You're teaching, teaching anywhere and they're anywhere. paying you, you and need a license. Yeah, you need, and if you're teaching using this as a teaching tool in a, in a, you know, as an art teaching tool, yeah, no, that's. Yeah. No, you're, you're using this for profit. For to profit, teach. yeah. For yeah. profit to teach. Yeah, that, there we go. That's, yeah. thank you. I retain those rights. Thank you. But you want to have every member of your family over and there's 65 of you? Go! Cool. Please send a picture. Yeah. Yeah, Send please. A picture. Pictures. We love to that's, see the pictures. That's why okay. we created the channel. So, okay. So you talked about uh, uh, when you sold artwork earlier, mm -hmm. right? So when you sell the artwork, they don't get any other rights. No, they can't make prints, reproductions, create T-shirts. No, not unless, what you, unless if, they buy the rights. What if it was a commission? Nope. Really? You still retain the rights. Unless specific, um, they have to specifically get the rights from you. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that you should check that legally and speaking. And believe me, but you do some commercial work. There's going to be a little bit of paperwork that retains those rights. You better read those contracts thoroughly. Yeah, there should be. Now, I, my, <laughs> my experience is that this is true as well, but this is not legal advice. Right. Do check your contracts, but generally right. speaking, you know, you're you're at the when you sell, you know, when you buy or sell something, you're at the protection of the state and or Fed what yeah. they extend there. So. Oh. Oh, speaking of. Yes. That little C next to your artwork is a notification. It is not protection. Yes. That yes. does not protect you from anything. Yes. It's silly. When I see people do that, I feel like they're silly. Yes. <laughs> no, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. But it is a little bit like putting up garlic out the front door. It's, it's, it's a notification. Notification. It's a notification. It's what it legally is. It's a notification. Actually, the work was copyrighted the moment you created it. Yes. Just in, in the United States. So, all right, I'm going to scroll back Other up here. Other countries have okay. different rules. Now, uh... <laughs> totally different rules. We have to scroll back up here. Which up makes here. being in the digital world incredibly challenging because the rules in the U.S. don't necessarily apply to the rules in Australia. I, ha I would have to go get legal representation in Australia. Yes. Or a lawyer who can get me legal... Which, like, I... Do you th nobody's making that much money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here reading some co some questions here. Okay. Uh, uh, what if a friend sends you an image and wants you to paint it for them at a cost? <sighs> Reproduction for hire. Reproduction for hire. 
you know <sighs> is this is this is this personal use is the end no it's personal? not personal use it's no, not well, well, so there's an art line here that I know every artist crosses <laughs> <laughs> right a lot of artists you know like everybody loves loss in but you might not have hundred and fifty thousand dollars right right so there might be a loss in like painting hanging in your home right that oh, is not yeah. legal but Hmm. 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 It's I don't know. Is it like downloading movies? I don't know what that is. No, it it really is like if if, if somehow he happened to walk into your house, he could deny your rights to that painting and leave with it. <laughs> I deny you had take the painting. He probably couldn't sue you for damages because it'd be very difficult for him to prove in court that you fundamentally damaged his economic well-being. Right. But he could literally walk into your house with his little surfer bod flinging his hair back and take the painting right off the wall and walk out and you would have no legal rights to stop. Well, that would, I, like, as long as I caught that Honestly, and was able to post yeah. that on YouTube, I would like... That'd be awesome. That's like YouTube awesome sauce. But Lucas could walk into a lot of people's houses and just take their artwork. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine. Uh, no, in Texas, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe there's some weird thing. Like, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, so, so I'm sure that's a state by a state. I'm not at all encouraging Beanie. Don't Tina, Beanie anybody's so, house. So no. Tina was asking this. This is this is interesting. So what if you make small changes that uh, you know to to change the look of it? Mm -hmm. So I've heard a lot of artists over the years say, "Oh, you got to change thirty percent of the painting." Yeah, that's legally no. Thirty percent, you said. Yeah, they'll think that there's all kinds of art myths. They're urban art myths. You have to change thirty percent of the painting. Nope. Nope. Um, so what cannot be copyrighted is a style. Can't copyright a style. Your style is not under. What is copyright. what does style mean? You know, like the the way you uh, construct a painting, like Van Gogh's brush strokes would not be under copyright today. So everyone could paint with that style. They just couldn't paint Star and Night. They couldn't paint Were he damage. alive today, they could not paint Starry Night. Or portions of recognizable portions of Starry Night. Gotcha. Right? So sometimes I do see people that will copy things and stuff like that, and they've changed it up, and they would not be, they wouldn't have a legal leg to stand on. So Van Gogh might come knocking on your door for that sunflower. No, he's, he's out of copyright. If, 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 but if yeah, he were he around would be undead. It's just time to go if you see Van Gogh. It's time to go. <laughs> it's time to run. It's a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> it's time to go. Yeah, look for the TARDIS. Um, <laughs> right? So uh, the TARDIS is another good one. The TARDIS belongs to the BBC and the people on that show. But, but police bo call boxes don't. Police call boxes which, do not. But they are different if you look at them. They are different the, uh, if which, you look at them. Yeah. So... So, but I mean, are you, are you, are you sort of like hanging your little booty over the gator pen? Yep. A little bit. Are the gators far, far away? Maybe they are. Maybe they're so far away, it's fun. Maybe they're right there snapping. You've got to kind of self-assess these <laughs> risks. <laughs> okay. And all artists kind of juggle that, that reality. So um, what it is, what the court will look at is, do they recognize it? Do they recognize that you took it? Is it recognizable? Very famous case. Coons. Huge artist. Work sells for shocking amounts of money live today um did uh oh this lady and this and th these puppies on a bench mm -hmm. he'd seen a postcard and he thought he'd gotten he was covered under fair use parody right and he did it in a bronze so he changed the media he added flowers behind the subject's hair everything else was the same in bronze right he lost his shirt on that court ate him alive was not covered under fair use because the judge could clearly see that it came from this card. You couldn't say it was pop culture, right? Because the, the artist that did the original photography uh, wasn't famous. It was just a small run card, <laughs> right? So clearly Coons had infringed on this artist's copyright, but didn't know he did because he put it, he'd done it bronze. He changed up a couple colors. He put some flowers there. Yeah, judge said no. <laughs> judge said no in a big way. That's a, that's a story that uh, uh, grown-up artists tell artist babies to scare them at night, but it's a true story. Kristen's out there going, luckily, we're, we're all very lucky that the British government isn't litigious about police call boxes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, right. But Brandy, and also, as, as a company, um, the you know, the, the, the Doctor Who property is not as much. Uh, Lucas Inc. is much less. So companies, like, kind of, they recognize that there's a symbiosis between the fans, in other words, cosplay, and themselves. 
Yeah. Right? Nobody shows up to the convention if they can't come and cosplay. Are they going to come smack down everybody who does a Spider-Man thing? No. But I can't wear a Spider-Man costume in the YouTube space, film it, and get it cleared through clearance. No. Never going to happen. Not unless you Just get... inside not, baseball. No trademarks, no logos, no... Not unless you have a letter from Marvel... Yeah. With your name on it. Oh, it's going to have it's to be like, such a letter. It's going to be so specific, like with like fingerprints and like a blood seal. <laughs> I just know that because that happened to some of my next up groups. <laughs> like <laughs> you, I mean, like you, when, when dealing with big companies, there's a lot of legal things they have to attend for. Right, because, because people because worldwide. YouTube has some money. So if somebody got upset about it, there's some, like me, there's really, they look at it and they're like, oh my gosh. It, Am I going to really spend all this money to make no money yeah, and we're have a fly no impact on the windshield. Boom, and possibly you know, get a ton of bad press? That's a decision that has to be made. And also, like I've, I've said before, if, if Lucas ever wrote me a letter, I would um, frame it and take my stuff down. Yes. <laughs> like, right away. a letter from Lucas. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm excited. No, I, I, don't think, I don't think so. But, again, everything's at the discretion of the copyright holder. Yeah. Here's an interesting thing you might not know. Famous celebrities. Marilyn Monroe. Can uh -huh. you paint her? What's that? Can you paint Marilyn Monroe? Famous people, uh, Ronald well, Reagan, you, you, anyone you, today? Can you? I thought you could paint the, the images of famous people. You can paint images of famous people, but do you know how artists constantly get in copyright issues with that? Because they paint the painting of, or they paint the photo. They of paint someone? the photo. Uh huh. Because the, the photographer owns the copyright of that image. So say you find a great picture of Megan Trainer that you love. Right. And you paint it from it. And it's photorealistic, exactly as you saw it. That photographer can, and honestly, the photographers are getting so sick of being ripped off, I'm going to even say likely will run you down. Yes. Like and, at this and point, if they're represented by our attorneys, you will hear from yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. If they're represented by our attorneys, you will hear from them. Yeah. Uh, uh, the photographers as a community are really sick of having their stuff used as reference. They don't, no one gets permission. It just gets used and monetized and a lot of them will be it, 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 you just got to think of them as as a, as a much more agitated group because they get infringed on more than anybody else online so so brandy has a, another real specific question here mm. so uh what if someone wishes to buy her painting mm -hmm. uh that she did from your tutorial can she, no, can she sell it and if so do we need to pay you too no that's in the use policy in the description down below no so but i could say it in my in my thing, I say no. But you could take a class where somebody would set that specific, up. Just with you. Just we all, we're just worried about it. you. We just so not, yeah, we just if it's friends or family, just sell. Okay. Just we love you. Great, wonderful. If it's in a commercial kind of public space like Etsy, Fine Art America, just anywhere that's like out there at your local craft fair, we ask for attribution. So if you paint this owl eye and you're gonna sell it, it'd be nice if somewhere publicly displayed, you know, uh, as uh, you know from the our chirpa, mm -hmm. something that attributes this design back to me as its original creator, is interpreted by you. Okay, so let me go back to St Stacy. Great Stacey. question. Stacy says, if she takes a picture of a giraffe at a safari park, mm -hmm. is there anything I need to sell the painting of my own photo? Do I need permission from the from the giraffe's owner? No. Oh wait, wait. You might need a site release. Only no. No. Not for the painting. Oh, I not for the painting for the photo. Safari Park is an implied public space. I would definitely get a lawyer's Check permission, but as I understand it, it, right, and often the parks will have this because when you're when you're in a space that it's assumed photography will be taken, right? Then there's different rights. Yeah, but j check with the park. As long as the park doesn't state otherwise, you own all those rights. Yeah, and you so, can just probably ask the guy on the bus. Yeah. And and yeah, generally they're and and you know mostly speaking, they probably have never thought of this as a thing. This would be a weird <laughs> thing. I you know, you could, but if you were in Disney, this is true. Like all, and you had a picture. Like if they could identify that you were taking, you know, like this was of the Disney park and things like that, there may be copyrightable images prints. within that. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, that would be an interesting space. So that's why at some point attorneys become necessary. Now, now down below in the links I have articles and I have a link for, in Texas we have an organization that helps artists with accountants getting their copyright registered. Oh, why do you register your copyright? If you're already registered, the minute you create it, why do you register it? Uh, for, so that you, try, you have protection, so okay. that you can seek the yeah. legal 
<laughs> I know why. You want me to explain? Why, no, no. I'll explain why. <laughs> Um, a couple of things. One, it's proof of creation, though generally the minute you photograph it, it's time stamped on your camera, and that is admissible. Um, also, then you can get damages. So lawyers are looking at it like this. All the times artists will come in and they've been really infringed on. There, there's a real famous thing where a large clothing company was being sold images from, I think it was Tumblr. It was from an uh, image searing site. Instagram, Tumblr, or something like that. So, so somebody, this one artist, was grabbing images off of Tum like the site, repackaging them and selling them in a bundle to this clothing company, who then put them on shirts and made a mint. Yeah. Right. Now, unfortunately, what happened with that case is that those artists didn't get any damages because their copyright wasn't registered, even though the use was egregious. Yeah. Right? They didn't do very well. But if their copyrights had been registered, then lawyers get so excited. <laughs> they get so thrilled and happy because that means that they can just chew everybody alive. Mm -hmm. So really all you're doing is you're arming your attorney. So let me make sure. So we have some clarifications here. Mm -hmm. Cameron would like to make sure this is clear. So if you're teaching and mm -hmm. I paint the same thing you did, does that count as learning and is that appropriate? So that's totally good to do. Wait, I don't know what you mean. Yeah. Like commercially? No, no. no. She, she means for just, you know, for purposes of learning. Because it says yeah. you're very specific. If you yeah. were teaching and I paint that same thing that you're teaching. Yeah. As long as you're not making as, money on it. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and uh, Briss Metal Chick, <laughs> 29. If you want to make money on it, get a license from us. Says, so fan art is not the best thing to do as, for, as an artist then? Oh, gosh, man, I can't say that. I can't say that. It has risk. It has risk. Well, especially when you sell fan art. And when you sell fan art, it has risk. Um, you're going to, when you do fan art, become a research person. Really look up that company. See if they have use policies posted. Mm -hmm. Because it will give you an idea of what, you know, what their culture is because different companies have different cultures some companies are much more litigious like nintendo's much more likely to go after its property rights and it says so on its website so <laughs> right whereas blizzard seems to have a culture being much more like hey fans i you know so Miriam, I mean uh, Tim Burton just recently shared some fan art. So thank you, Miriam. Miriam says uh, she painted you and Kevin and sent you the drawing and gives you all the rights so you can use them. <laughs> thank you. And, and Kate says, so Kate, the sleepy teacher, man. I, Hi, I, Kate. I'm a student, so I, I know how you feel. Um, she says that yeah, congratulations, you're 22 people away from 80k. Totally off track, but she's obsessed That's with the numbers. That's pretty exciting. So. Let's do a happy dance for that. 22 okay. people away from 80k, and then we'll, if we you click know, 80k, I, we should we should you should check its real time. Maybe we're there. I have not. Um, if it looks like it's 22 on the outside, it may be we need to do the 80k dance because it it updates your subs. It tells you guys slower than it tells us. Does it? It tells us a minute by minute subscriber I'll, I'll up give and you down. Some music like I can literally show. watch people dislike what I do. Nope, 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 nope. And what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'll see if I can find us uh, some. Uh, whoops. I gotta get my clicker back over here. Man, did you know that we have like 280 people out here with us today? Is this the my gosh. Out? You guys, well, right now we had, we had, 200, we had 266. Right this minute, we had 280 like oh, just a minute ago. These things jumped all over the place. 160 likes. Thank you guys so much. Love, love, love having every one of you people out here with us. And sorry if I'm um, sounding kind of DeFranco. I was, I was accused of sounding DeFranco saying, I love your faces. Right. Right but now? No. Well, it was the other earlier, day. Earlier? Are you being twitchy? I, earlier. No, in <laughs> oh, chat. We all get so, twitchy on YouTube. We get so oh, weird. it's back. See, we're 172 people. Oh. So, uh, 170 likes. Thank you, guys. Oh, Thank yeah, by you. the way. We, I appreciate the likes. T tell them to like, I comment, brush subscribe. brush off the dislikes. Whatevs. Do we have to remind <laughs> them to do all the social, the, the, the likes? Oh, yeah. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you have more questions, definitely put them in the comments. Be sure and share this with your friends. I think that there's a lot of, like, ugliness and attacking. This, so this is the next section I want to talk about, the art police. Sometimes people, like, put on their little badge and appoint themselves the art cop. Mm-hmm. And they like to run around and put hashtags, stolen art, all over <laughs> stuff. Super obnoxious, right? 
Now here's the issue with going out and saying you think that you saw somebody copy something from somebody else. Let's say you feel that like a fire in your soul. This is just for you. You're so outraged. What is this for? Oh, I'm like, we're, oh, I'm, that's a wild way. Tell all your friends to subscribe. We'll hit 80 and I'll dance again. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like really far. <laughs> I guess it's 22. That's not too bad. 22. We're 22 subscribers, subscribers away. Come on, I'm so awesome. So, <laughs> no, we're doing this. So they come out and they run in packs and they get their friends and they all go around and they're really outraged and they feel like they're really defend defending the little guy. And they'll grab an artist and they will chew them alive. I've seen it. I've had it happen to me. Mm hmm Oh. Which is like all, you know what? It's just so hard when you're like a Goliath and they're just like smacking you and you're like, ah. I'm not going to smash everybody. So just uh, take the high road. So, woo, it went asking, up to. Yeah, Jeremy's <laughs> asking here. So he's like, who are the art, art police? And they're well, self-appointed. Our art, art police are people that believe that they perceive a crime. Yep. Uh, it's big on Instagram. Um, in fact, there's bully factions that have whole pages organized. Like, if you think artwork's been stolen, you come tell us, and we'll go attack that person. That's, and then they hashtag it, stolen art. That's just crazy. Now, this would be great if everybody was, like, precogs, and we knew true crime. And right. for sure we knew. But the thing is, like, somebody could post something up on social media that was created long, long, long. Done, done. It's art CSI. Yeah. A long time before it ever you ever saw it on social media. You are not an investigator, right? No, and you are not. honestly, it's amazing how artists have trouble gut checking themselves. Like when they're pretty much in a trend of derivative stuff that's out there, well represented by, you know, two three hundred artists. <laughs> they seem to never know. It's like they're yeah. It's, it's a tough. weird kind of denial that they get. They're like, no, I'm completely original. I'm very fresh thinking. I'm like, because there's two hundred paintings just like yours on Pinterest. Not just like they didn't copy it. They're not it's copyright just, no, infringement. It's, like, it's just a lot of people drip some flowers. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> there's just so yeah, many. They're like, responsible for their creation. Did they Google search it? Did and they I, find the out Eiffel Tower is a really good one of these because huh? there's, the Eiffel Tower oh, is a good thing. The Eiffel Tower is my favorite one. Because there's only a couple of views of the Eiffel, of Tower. The Eiffel Tower. So intrinsically, you've got two real solid views of the Eiffel Tower that five. get used. I'll give it five. five. Okay. Uh, there's five I think I've seen in the art industry for the last 20 years. Yeah. Five views of the Eiffel Tower that I see again and again and again and again and again. And, and, and that's not because they're trying to copy each other or being yeah. derivative. It's just because if there you go a, there. There was a whole big military case about this, about this woman. Like, I, I was actually asked to weigh in on this, not kidding, to send in a petition because this girl was accused of copying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. And that's I'm right. like, I'm like, what? as an art teacher, you can't let her paint the Eiffel Tower because how would you know if she was copying or not? Right. right? Flowers in front of the Eiffel Tower. Anybody's guess. Yeah. Isn't it really? And, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a lot. Now, I mean, Angela, I think, did a really unique Eiffel Tower. And if I saw that again and well, some other thing, I could definitely see maybe it was inspired by what she did because she took a really fresh look. But mostly, you know, like I had a really unique look at the Eiffel Tower with my, my weird pink and blue sky and my flowers everywhere because I made up a lot of that nonsense. But I just used the tower and then made up a bunch of stuff around it. Right, that so, doesn't exist in Paris so, anywhere. So you, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, uh, on, on a, on, but on some fundamental level, this is an Eiffel Tower as viewed, you know, like mm -hmm. we're, you know, these, the, you know, when, when approaching this subject matter, there's just so much room for. So I get my artwork stolen all the time. Yeah. Like all the time. Like well, all uh, no, I, let's I, clarify I, that they steal the thumbnails. They steal the <laughs> thumbnail. They don't that's even how we. That's it. why we say it's our Google art. Google search says <laughs> I found your painting over here being taught at a sip and paint <laughs> five nights a week, We're and I go and it's my thumbnail. Sometimes my signature isn't even cropped off of it. Okay, so I get this. I get this pain. I get this frustration, and sometimes I want to go bananas. John has to like calm me down all the time. <laughs> I want to go bananas, and I want to. And every once in a while, I do. I crack. I get on social media, and I'm like. This is your five minute warning. Okay. Well, no, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do our thing here. Oh, yeah? so, oh we're gonna keep going. Yeah. Okay. We've right. just got to because this right. is this is such an important I'm good. subject. I want it to close caption, but this is an important subject. Okay. So, um, I want to. I'm outraged. I'm upset. It's not. I think that they stole. It's that they stole. <laughs> right. Oftentimes, I write them and say, "Hey, maybe you didn't read my use policy." Mm -hmm. I definitely have no money from you because I don't see any of my my trademarking that would indicate that I have. 
gotten money from you. Correct. Right? And they tell me to <laughs> suck it. And it's generally some not nice version of suck it. And then they come by and dislike a bunch of videos. <laughs> yeah. So, right, I want to go there and, and post. But what I found is, is that I have a bunch of friends now who love me, and they want to post too. Mm -hmm. They want to come with me, right? And I don't generally take this public because of that. And here's why. Because it puts everyone who comes with me at a particular risk. Because there are now laws against cyberbullying. Yep. And the minute you write somebody something, I recently had a bunch of people write a bunch of accusatory stuff to me. Yes. Right? The minute they put it in text, it's now officially liable. If it's not true and it's damaging to your reputation, it's liable. Yeah. And there are now attorneys who take these cases happily on spec and yeah youtube is becoming you know uh it's becoming more of a place where businesses are run and people are becoming more litigious and, and they will and they will sue over it and they will put in content yeah all that stuff will happen it's just it's getting to be a rough place so my sometimes. my big advice to you and the reason i'm gonna let this run over it's five minutes is yeah. how do you handle that let's say you put a, something There's up on too. you paint with me and you put something up on ig Yes. And somebody else decides that it's their friends, whatnot. I'll tell you what, I have never once even understood how they got there. Mm -hmm. Yet. <laughs> but say so they do. And then they write a bunch of stuff and you get a bunch of hashtags and people are seeing a bunch of nasty stuff to you. What would you do? That's, I don't know anything more upsetting to an artist. Yeah. It, it, it is, it, it, if it isn't true, it's the worst. It is the worst feeling in the world. And, you, and, and, and the inclination is to defend yourself, which, by the way, i got to tell you, is pointless. I yeah. have yet to have anyone go, oh, you know, this is really unreasonable. <laughs> Just, I don't know what I was thinking. Obviously, I don't know when you painted this and how, how, how why yeah. would I? No one has done that. At, at the point that you're in an internet debate, rational thinking has gone out I, the window. I say this from having made this mistake. It's over. It's done. They don't care. They don't care how you feel. They're just going to get more it's and more insulting. It's now just a bloodletting. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now they've come for blood. And, your, and then your next inclination might be to block, right, and mm -hmm. delete. But I say to you, don't yet, because you have a step you must do. Capture. Capture. Yeah. Snapshot that comment, please. Yeah. Capture the comment. Put it in a file. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe you'll never have to look at it, right? You just snapshot it, put it in a file, then block delete. Yeah. That's what I do with all my problems. I just block it. If people are being a problem for me, if they're being ugly, if they're coming for me, and I know it's not a misunderstanding, it's on purpose. We just document it, block it, and delete it. Document it, block it, delete it. Because you're not going to, if it, just, yeah. Patterns emerge over time, and it becomes very evident to a court when you can document this kind of stuff. So it's just in your best defense. Yeah, and when you go to an attorney, which you now can do, yeah. right? So if you were getting really, really harassed, if you have all these comments documented, Right now, you can go to the social media platform and have these users, you know, uh, penalized. Now you can go to an attorney. Now you're protected. And so that's all I would say to you is that as you're painting things, and, and, and you don't have to worry about one comment, one one crazy comment. It's when they get in swarms. I've had swarms hit. Me. Yeah, you know, you gotta you, know, you pay attention to it because you know when people are cyberbullying, you're gonna see an unusual rise in activity. And that's when you just want to document it. And, and it's so hard. L oh, lean on your loved ones, get to. lots of hugs, and know that this is a hard time as an artist. I, to go I think through. that's been the hardest thing of coming up on YouTube that yeah. was not true in the beginning. Um, honestly, in the beginning, I really got love because nobody could find me. So, people <laughs> who really wanted to paint could find me. Yeah. And Angela and I talk about it's the popping of the bubble. Mm -hmm. When your bubble pops, you're protected by this, I don't know, bubble of innocence in, in, in your infancy online. And then as you grow and more people become aware of you, and it's wonderful and it's great, it does let some new experiences in that you cannot fathom. Yeah. And my inclination is to always, like, if people say something terrible about you, is to respond. If people infer something terrible about you, is to respond. And you know what? We also have a lot of Valkyries in this community, too. Yeah. And that's what I love about I mean, it. And it really is but the overall, that's the, oh, oh, we're actually, for the size of our community, we have an incredibly positive community. It's like unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you guys. I, I never know if YouTube's going to put me on the trending page. If what? YouTube puts you on the trending page. <laughs> we hope someday. We'd love to be no, there. No, no, we've, we've actually hit there. We had a whole weird Oh yeah, we've, we've been there. Yeah, we've, but I mean, like, it's, good. it's good to be Luckily, there. Luckily, even on the trending page, people aren't like, hey, painting, that's what I need to click. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly they're like, where's the, where's the drama? And they don't. But sometimes they wander in and then they, you've seen them kind of in the yeah. chat. They go crazy. Well, 
Be it's unusual, but what I'm saying is is that you you know just know that that even if you think someone has taken something from someone something from me or an artist that you love, yeah, right. Notify that. That's what. Here's what I do. When I see, I have I have a very good friend whose artwork is stolen a lot. I wouldn't say she's a good friend. I know her online. I like her work. That's what I mean to say. I know her online and I like her work. And you have a casual communication. I have casual communication with her. And I think she's a spot on painter and has been on digitally for a while. Okay. So I admire her. <laughs> All right. That's. Is this, well, I just don't want her like because she's gonna know who I'm talking about. She's gonna be like, this is really weird and creepy. I don't know. <laughs> so in we're that, we're not talking to you. We're just spreading love. She gets ripped off a lot. And so sometimes when I see myself being ripped off, next to me will be her. Yeah. Uh, and she does these like little dot paintings that are really cool. <laughs> and so I don't write that person, right? And I don't write them and be like, this is Sharon Cummins and I know her and I'm going to, you're an art thief, hashtag stolen art, blah, blah, blah. Even though I know it's true. I know it's true. I know her collection of art. I see it's stolen. All now, the if time. you're a superhero and you have a secret identity, don't tell Cinnamon. Yeah, true. All right. So, <laughs> totally true. So, but my point is what I do, what I do for my own friends, and what I recommend you do is notify the artist. Yeah. When I see an artist that I like, if it's, Mar if it's, if it's something Mary Englebright, and I don't know her, but I see like a uh, painting party place stealing it, I would just notify her publishing company. Yeah. I would just send the link and say, hey, I saw this, and I'll let them work it out. Because the minute I go out there and comment, I'm exposing myself. I don't want you guys exposed. Yeah. Right. That's why I don't ever like do like the lynch moms. I don't want you guys exposed. If you see something and you think somebody's lifting the artwork, you just send us a link to it, just the hyperlink so we can find it. And, it. and if it is, then we'll pass that on to the people who need to handle it. And if it's not, no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. When nothing has happened. And that's such a good way of doing it. <laughs> Do not so, get all so, the relatives so together. Gail asked the best question that okay. gives me the opportunity to do what I'm supposed to do. And Gail what? said, how do you get on the trending page? And the way that we get on the trending page, Gail, is for you to click that share button and that like button and that subscribe button. It, if a lot of interest suddenly happens on a video, like a lot of people are leaving a lot of comments and there's a lot of likes and a lot of shares and there's an unusual amount of interest for that segment. They actually kind of um, work the algorithm so it's sort of fair. It's like handicapping and horse races. So, like, somebody who's doing really well on polymer clay could end up on the turning page. Um, and that's really what it's about. It's about you guys. The more you guys share the videos, um, comment on the videos, like the videos, the more YouTube decides it's relevant and shows it to other people. We literally do not exist without you. <laughs> right. Like, I'm, at I'm, all. Re I'm reading comments, so I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm, you go ahead. I'm, let's I'm, do it. Let's do a, no, a no. omnibus Q&A. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm actually we asking don't have for to. No, you totally can. I'm asking for clarification on a question right now, which okay. is why you don't have my full attention. So I know it's scary. The copyright thing is, and I wish I could say, oh, yeah, definitely do fan art. There's no risk, but then I would just be lying to you. But I have to say again, there's a lot of artists whose entire business, if Jasmine Beckwith hadn't done fan art, she wouldn't be an official Disney artist right now. Okay, so... So it's a, it's a sticky thing. You don't want to ever tell any aspiring creative, hey, no, you just want to just be honest and be like, somebody may write you a letter or something telling you to stop at some point. At which point, stop! <laughs> so, okay, so that makes more sense. So Mo Cuts was asking, okay, what about a painting from a song? Is that under copyright? And that's a, I don't... Are you putting the lyrics to the song in the painting? So there was someone asking about that <laughs> earlier too, yes. So actually someone was asking about lyrical paintings and putting lyrics and, okay, and quotes so and things. Okay, so you would have to be covered under parody. Interesting. And then they really look at, is everything, in, this is great, you get to have a judge who may or may not have an art education, look at your painting and decide, is everything in the painting, right, uh -huh. necessary to convey the image, which is why Andy Warhol was able to do a soup can, or why the Kiss My mm, Hershey's Kiss was allowed. Mm -hmm. Those images were necessary as they were to create the parody. Gotcha. Right? Right? So, you could. And really seriously, most companies do not... Okay, like if you do a bunch of Barbie pieces and then Mattel comes for you and you're in a gallery and Mattel comes to sue you, your art career is made. Mm. Right? So there's this sort of weird thing, but then you're like, maybe you're like Dean Koontz and the puppy guy takes you down. <laughs> so, 
But there is this thing where, like, if I'm if I'm Coca Cola and I have a brand identity, and um, the sweetest grandma in the world has painted some Coca Cola bottles and she's just selling at her local craft fair, if I send my attorney in to get her, uh, it's damaging to my company. Yeah. Right. Like it would be. So there's some there's some stuff like, but you know, don't put them on T-shirts and nationally distribute them through Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. Because then Coca Cola has to deal with you. <laughs> be a pest. <laughs> <laughs> it's not legal advice. Oh yeah. So but, And you can always ask an attorney if you're if you're if you're worried. But what about putting people other people's quotes in your art? Some quotes are so famous that they're covered under fair use. So you, you have to kind of look do your own research on Again, that quote, huh? I just really seriously, can you see like maybe Paris Hilton or somebody coming and saying I copyrighted that, but what, she, remember she did. She had that. She, she did. Had some shirts. There's some people that will do that. There we know some, who they are. We don't want to talk any, there anything. Some, that's, uh, oh my goodness! Fourteen away. That's I just crazy. I just pulled up the real time counter. Who's ever sharing? Thank they, you. Oh, look at that! Just another one, dude. Eighty seven. It's been going up since y'all have been campaigning. I can actually watch it go up. It's crazy to watch your. You can check out real time subscriber counts for your ra- favorite channels. Why you would do that? I don't know. I get why we do it. We have channels. I wonder if there's a. What's crazy is when you watch your real-time subscriber count and it goes down, and you're like, "What I do? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll do better. I know I painted a scary eye. I'll paint cuter stuff soon. No, <laughs> my hat today. I think so I can... yeah, I, I, you know, I, that's the thing. Like when you're in a class with my mom, and you're in a class with me, and and mashups are so great. Um, a lot of times you guys will ask me, you know, is this okay? And I'll answer for myself. Like, I, I feel like you've substantially changed the image. Like, maybe you were inspired by an idea I had. But that's the other thing. Inspiration. All right, inspiration. How do you get inspiration and not end up in legal trouble? Which is probably the first thing I should have said. <laughs> i got to remake this whole series next year. All right. <laughs> Where I'm just, like, down to just the facts, ma'am. All right. You're, so you're on Pinterest and you're inspired. Uh-huh. By things you see. How do you do that? I have to do that all the time. Right? So you can do the reverse Google image search like I talked about earlier. We can make sure what you're doing isn't pulling up and you're using keywords. Like, say you're inspired. Everybody's asked me about that black cat with the pumpkin on its head. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants that black cat with the pumpkin on its head painted. I can't do that exact image because that would be copyright infringement. But I could see that there's a bunch of cats now with pumpkins on their heads. And I could look at ways that I could be inspired by that idea and paint cats and relationships to pumpkins and it might have a top in his head but I would do it in such a substantially different way as to not infringed on that artist's copyright or I could do something where I say this artist has a very distinctive style uh-huh. that I like the way that they put down paint and use techniques and I can duplicate those but not any image they've ever done right. doesn't make me popular <laughs> now but it is allowed. And that's another thing, too. Like, somebody can totally be up your grill oh, in your biz. Mm-hmm. Like, co- doing doing these works that are they're not really copyright infringement, but you can tell they fully used you as their basis. Sure. I have always take a deep breath. John sees me take a knee <laughs> on this a lot. You know? It, it, um, it's this part is of the journey. Like, like, this is a big thing on YouTube. Like, everybody does a giant gummy thing. Yep. I'm sure the first person who did a giant gummy thing has to take a knee on that. Yeah. Right? You know, I'll do painting, it's real successful, and somebody comes along and doesn't want to like it. But it's not copyright infringement, and you have to recognize where that, that space is. Otherwise, you're just punching at shadows. Right? And mm. you're not busy creating, and what you want to be is being busy creating. The other thing to think about is, is if you go find a style that's very, very popular and then you build your entire business on it, you're probably not going to be in good space with your fellow artists in your local area. <laughs> and sometimes being in a good space, if you have very aggressive legal business practices, right? It went down. It what? did it. I said it and then oh, it did it. No, it's, I was going to say here. I'll tell you what. What do you think about this? I'm, I'm setting up over here mm-hmm. another uh, live chat here. I know that we're kind of wrapping up okay. what we're doing here. But what would you think about us going over here and just doing an ad hoc 80,000 subscriber live pr- Okay, party. yeah, that would be totally fine. And uh, I'm going to set that up right now while John's we're chatting. John's going to set that up, so I'll finish up this thought and this idea, okay. right? So you have to decide where do you want to put your energy? What's the fight that you want to have, Right. 
you know, and again, like Lockhart could have been all mad at me over that apple. Thank goodness she's such a classy chick because I really honestly wasn't up her grill. Mm -hmm. We just used the same photo reference site. So being a little bit easy in this space, easy on yourself and easy on other people, I think is very important. Recognizing that as artists, you have to be inspired. Everybody loves to quote, uh, steal like an artist <laughs> <laughs> to me. Be sure and read the book before just taking the title as instructions. <laughs> um, really? No, seriously. Sometimes people just see that and they're like, artists steal. Yeah. We are influenced by each other. I call it my art DNA. Yeah. This means that every image, everything I've ever seen, everything that's ever come into my eyeballs influences the things that I create. And I recognize that. If I see a very direct influence, you might have noticed in my videos, I'll shout it out. If an artist has directly influenced a design that I'm creating, I'm going to shout them out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's just something I'm going to do. I'm not going to shout you out if you didn't influence my design. And you cannot bully me into doing it. <laughs> right. It's been tried. But if you did influence my design, and sometimes if I see somebody out there that's in a really similar space, I might shout them out. Yeah. Like Because I, I do that reverse Google image search. If I'm like, hey, somebody else loves a Lorax tree, I might be like, and theirs is even cooler than mine. I might just use the position that I'm in to shout them out and give them a solid. Yep. Right? But, you know, on the whole... You've got to just be like, you've got to recognize that you, especially as students, especially as new creatives, you have to copy in some sense. You have to. It's the only way that you can learn. Recognizing that it's part of your process and that you have to copy and it's the only way that you can learn. Just know that while you're copying, like say you want to be a fan artist, right? You want to, you want to work at Marvel. We're going to be copying a lot of Marvel artists to get there. Those yeah. skills are hard won, Right. And to keep yourself in colored pencils, you may on occasion have to have a kiosk. Yeah. Just knowing what the reality is, I think sometimes it's the not knowing what kind of monster is under the bed that freezes artists up. Yeah. Just, just know what your deal is. This is your landscape. It's like, okay, this is my path. I want to break in to this type of art. This is what I've got to do. I want to learn these types of techniques. It used to be an art school and is in many traditional art schools that you go into the museum and they sit you down in front of the masters and they're like, do this. <laughs> yeah. It's that necessary as part of your growth process. And you're going to see that my mom and I and several other artists will be very adamant on this. It's necessary that you copy for a while. It's necessary then that you go through the mashup stage where you take a lesson and a lesson and you mash them up. Mm -hmm. It's necessary that you take three or four paintings and mash them up. That's your path to creating original art. And those steps can't be skipped. Yeah. Right. It is not necessary that you copy somebody's stuff and put it on a t-shirt and Sell distribute it. it nationally. <laughs> and that's the only place that you're going to really run into some trouble. Yep. Right. That's the only place. And so you, I, that fear that I've been hearing from everybody, I just want you to let that go. You don't need to be afraid. Yeah. If you want to take one of my paintings and anybody else's paintings on YouTube and you want to mash them up, you and I are cool. <laughs> <laughs> we good. <laughs> you know, if you guys want to change the color of something in the painting, we're good. I have get, that's why I put the use policy down there was for all of you. Mm -hmm. So you guys knew you're good. It's all good. You just you don't even have to worry about it. It's how it works supposed to lower your blood pressure. Yeah. So just relax it. and take a break. So we're <laughs> gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna shut down here. Okay. Uh, and, and we're gonna spin down. Then we're gonna jump back home. We're just gonna come over and we're gonna do because everyone's saying congratulations over here. We're gonna go over and get Did some anyone want to do that? Yeah. Is the, that just us? We're gonna no, have the, the eighty thousand party. Yeah. We're gonna go over there. We're gonna do that real quick. We're gonna go over and say hello. We're just do a little hug and a dance and a love for it's you guys. It's gonna be just for whoever's here though. Just, just for everyone, for, for any of the two hundred eighty people who are still wanting to hang it's out. Just you guys. Just you guys. All right. We're gonna go over there and we're gonna hang out just for a little bit longer. Okay. But that way we can switch topics. Chats. We can, and you we, don't know. We don't know. But we'll be quick about it. All right. We'll see you there. Well, I, let me I go push all my buttons. Button, 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 button. I don't. I have a screen time.